you can fight the duel or chance having your throat cut some dark night. Either way, you'll die before the week is out. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. We saw Paladin. We saw Paladin. Uh, over here, hey boy. Oh. I have a message for you, Mr. Pa hey, hey, Mr. Paladin, why are you sitting in that chair facing door to the dining room? Uh, go away, hey boy. Well, what's the matter with you old chair, Mr. Paladin? You get a much better view of hotel lobby. Hey boy, be gone. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, Mr. Paladin. Oh, wait, the message. Oh, you say be gone. Hey boy, be go. The message, hey boy. I cannot think why you sit in hard chair facing closed door of dining room when old chair give fine view of hotel lobby. Hey, boy, there are some things that are my own business. Now give me the message. Yes, sir. Oh, it's going to drive hey, boy crazy. John Sutherland. <laughs> That's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, you send answer to interesting message? Yes. Same old stuff? Yes. Yes, sir. Have gone, will travel. Just go and send it, hey, boy. Yes, sir. Well? Mr. Paladin, this chair not good for you. You all mixed up, forget to tell, hey, boy, where to send a message. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> to Mr. John Sutherland, Knob Hill. Yes, sir. Oh, there, there. There she is. There you are, hey boy. Oh. Hey boy, take back all the reckless statements, Mr. Paladin. This is the best chair in hotel. This is Frank Knight speaking for Longine, the world's most honored watch. It's wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. In the field of time, did you know that Longines watches have won more great public honors for excellence, elegance, and accuracy than any other watch in the world? This is true. For close to a century, the highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet, for a surprisingly modest cost, you may own or proudly give a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping. See your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. John Sutherland, ship owner. His estate high on Knob Hill commanded a view of the bay where never less than two of his sailing vessels lay at anchor. The Sutherland family had brought a great deal of wealth to San Francisco and to themselves. Yes? Uh, Paladin to see Mr. Sutherland. Oh, yes. Father's expecting you, Mr. Paladin. He's in the new building. A new building? Oh, I'm sorry. You've never been here before. No, no. <laughs> well, you're a very privileged person, Mr. Paladin. I am? Yes. No one has been allowed in the new building since it was built. We're not even allowed to go near it. But you're to go there immediately. <laughs> fine, fine. Uh, is, is it on the grounds? You just follow the path behind you, Mr. Paladin. You can't possibly miss it. Thank you. Mr. Paladin? Yes? I think you should know something. I'm very curious about you. I shall try not to disappoint you, Miss... Uh... I'm Elizabeth Sutherland. Miss Sutherland. 
There had been many stories about John Sutherland, that he'd sailed around the world some 50 times, that he'd married a Chinese princess in his travels, that he'd ridden an elephant hunting tigers in India, that he'd killed 10 men in a fight in the West Indies. But in truth, I actually knew nothing about the man except that he was very powerful, very wealthy, and now that he had a very lovely daughter. Then as I approached the new building, I... What? Mr. Sutherland! Mr. Sutherland! Who's there? Paladin! Speak up! Who's there? Paladin! Paladin, I'm glad you came. Come in. Well, I heard gunfire. Yes. Come in. You? You are Mr. Sutherland? Yes. Well, may I... Is there anything I can do? Yes. Treat me as you would any man, Mr. Paladin. Of course. I've constructed this room for a specific purpose. I need your help. Burlap. Layer after layer of burlap on the walls. It was my intention that the shots not be heard from the outside. I see. And here, the target that's never been hit. That is why I've sent for you, Mr. Paladin. To teach me to shoot. Teach you? It's worth $5,000 to me. Why? Mr. Paladin, let us understand each other. I'm willing to pay you $5,000 to teach me to shoot, not to ask me why. $5,000. Mr. Sutherland, I have to accept just to find out why it's worth that much to you. Oh, good then. You'll stay at my home as my guest. You'll attend all the social functions of my household as a friend. It shall not be unpleasant for you, sir. Well, thank you. And we shall practice here daily till I can hit a target merely by hearing its position. I'll do the best I can. I'm sure you will. You, uh, you had heard many things about me, hadn't you, Mr. Paladin? Oh, yes, I had, but not... Uh, but uh... not that I have been blind for almost a year. Totally, completely blind. What do you need? You need lots of dollars during sicknesses. You need lots of dollars for an accident. You need the kind of protection that only mutual of Omaha sells. What do you need? You need health insurance that offers you maximum benefits at minimum cost. Mutual of Omaha Income Protection Insurance with the unusual lifetime benefits feature. Add this long-term protection to your group coverage and save up to 54%, depending on your age and type of group coverage. Here's what you need. You need to get the most for your health insurance dollar by insuring with Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. For maximum benefits at minimum cost, call your local Mutual of Omaha agent in the yellow pages or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. Write for details on the low-cost practical protection you need. You can save up to 54% when you add Mutual of Omaha protection to your group coverage. Write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. blind man had hired me to teach him to shoot. It was slow, but we worked steadily. Mr. Sutherland's determination was such that by the tenth day, he was hitting the target three or four times out of 15 tries. My first preoccupation was why. Why would a man in his condition go to this trouble? But he would tell me nothing. I learned quite by accident one evening a few weeks later. Oh, Father. Father, there you are. No, Elizabeth. Tell me, does she look beautiful tonight, Mr. Paladin? As always. Good evening, Miss Sutherland. 
You're very formal, Mr. Paladin. Oh, I don't mean to be. It's just that... It's just uh, that you're not a friend of Father's. Elizabeth. Father, there's something you should know about Mr. Paladin. I've been doing a little checking. In fact, I'll tell everybody. Elizabeth, you've had too much champagne. Don't be ridiculous, Father. I'm not a child. Listen to me, everybody. Listen. I've learned something fascinating about our Mr. Paladin. It's wonderful. It's most exciting. I won't tell till everybody's quiet. Our Mr. Paladin is a gunman. Elizabeth. Mr. Paladin, won't you give us a demonstration? Of what, Miss Sutherland? Good manners? <laughs> I was thinking of a demonstration with your gun. <laughs> Do you see that tiny knob on the banister at the head of the staircase? Yes. Could you hit it from here? A good gun handler could. I asked if you could. I've heard you're very good with a gun. Oh, please entertain us, Mr. Paladin. It's not often we have a professional gunman in our midst. Elizabeth, stop this. Oh, no, Father. Do you know what I really think? I think this man is here because of Jamie. Elizabeth, I've listened to all I'm going to do from you. Oh, that's it, isn't it? I'm right, aren't I? Not another word. Oh, Father, Father. Mr. Paladin, I apologize to you. Now, if you'll excuse me. Elizabeth put on quite a show, didn't she? Oh, Miss Gibson. But we're getting used to it. She's been upset for several weeks now, ever since it happened. Ever since what happened? Ever since Jamie Douglas jilted her. All right, Mr. Sutherland, you ready? Yes. Now, as I let go of each string, the ball will tap the target. So you listen very carefully and shoot as quickly as you can. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, go on, do it. All right. Hey, you got it. Good. Now, again. Again. I, uh, I didn't hear it very well. Then try again. Ah, we'll stop now. You're tiring. No, let me try more. We've been working all day. It's my last day, Paladin. What? Last night I sent a note to Douglas. Douglas? Oh, Jamie Douglas? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's accepted. The duel is tomorrow. Duel? You? You saw Elizabeth last night, Paladin. How she is. I won't have her bearing her shame before our friends any longer. As though she has no one to defend her. You can't fight him in a duel. Elizabeth was sweet, loving, a wonderful person before she met Douglas. I tried to tell her he was no good. He was just a cheap gambler. He was only after money, but she wouldn't listen. Then a wealthy, available young widow came along. Mr. Sutherland, I sympathize with you, but you can't fight a duel. I should at least have tried. I can't talk you out of this? No. Even a blind man must have his self-respect, Mr. Paladin. May I act as your second? I, I'd be honored, sir. This man, Douglas, you say he's a gambler? Yes, but Paladin don't meddle in it. No. No, I merely want to meet the sort of person who would shoot at a blind man. Cut, Douglas. No. No more, Paladin. You've cleaned me. Fifteen hundred dollars. Well, gentlemen, I guess that's the game, then. That was a good game, Douglas. I enjoyed it. I'm sure you did. How about me, Douglas? You owe me a thousand. I'll pay you. Be sure you do, Douglas. Bad gambling debts can be a bit unpleasant. I said I'll get it be here tomorrow afternoon. Just see that you're here. I will be. Ah, uh, say, uh, Douglas, uh, Douglas, I want to talk to you. What do you want to talk to me about? I understand that you're going to meet with Mr. Sutherland tomorrow morning. 
How do you know Sutherland? I'm his second. Look, Paladin, I don't want to kill the old man, but what can I do? He's forcing it. What are the terms of your duel of honor, Jamie? Back to back, walk ten paces, turn, cock the gun, and fire. They're his terms, not mine. I don't intend to shoot to kill. You may not, but he does. Douglas, you're a dead man. <laughs> Against him? I don't think so. I taught him to shoot. The second he hears your gun cock, he'll kill you. But but how can he? He will. He'll know where you are by the sound of your gun. Then it'll be too late. Are you serious? Of course, there's a way of avoiding the chance of a lucky shot. How? I've taken $1,500 from you gambling. You owe another man 1000 I'll pay you 2000 to shout and fall when he shoots. If he's such a good shot, why are you doing this? Because I don't want him to scar his family name by killing you. $2,000. Hmm. How can I be sure he won't hit me? He won't. I'll load his gun with powder, no bullet. You fire into the ground. He'll think he's wounded you. He'll have his honor. I'll do it. Tomorrow morning, then? Tomorrow morning. McLaren Park, 6 o'clock. And Paladin, you make sure about the load in his gun. No bullet. No bullet. One hundred and thirty people killed by fire at sea, the captain dead, perhaps poisoned, and the chief engineer sat helplessly moaning and wringing his hands. Was there a murderer on board? Now, read in the latest issue of Look Magazine, the mysterious and incredible story of the ill-fated vessel, the Morrow Castle. You folks who enjoy the action and suspense of Have Gun, Will Travel will be particularly fascinated by Look Magazine's detailed report of the death of the Morrow Castle. Did the chief radio operator deliberately touch off the fire? Or was he really a hero? Were 130 people murdered and the Morrow Castle burned to hide evidence that the captain may have been poisoned? Get the chilling answers in Look. Learn in Look about the one man on the ship who was acclaimed for superhuman devotion to duty and how he was later imprisoned for the bludgeon murder of two of his neighbors. Find out in Look how it was discovered that there was a pathological fire setter aboard the Morrow Castle. Don't miss Fire at Sea in the new issue of Look Magazine. It's on your newsstands now. Get Look today. Gentlemen, you know the procedure. Yes, let's get on with it. Back to back. On my count, ten paces. Turn... Cock your pistols and fire. Ready? Yes, ready. On my count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Paladin, wait. What is it? This pistol, it, it, it doesn't balance right. Paladin, is there a bullet in this gun? Paladin, you tricked me. There's no bullet in mine either. All right, then. We'll load them. Both of them. Do it, Paladin. Immediately. Uh, no, wait a minute. Load the guns, Paladin. Mr. Sutherland, look, can't Paladin, we... load. No. No, I can't go through with this. No. Stop him, Paladin. Stop him. Let him go. Let him go. Father. Father. Oh, Father, are you all right? Elizabeth. What's she doing here, Paladin? I told her to come. <sighs> I wanted her to see the kind of man she was wasting herself on. Oh, Father, I saw him run. I saw Jamie run. Why, he's afraid of you. Next time I'll have bullets. No, Father. There'll be no next time. I don't think Jamie will be back. Elizabeth's right, Mr. Sutherland. Douglas has run. And your daughter has seen him for the coward he is. I ask you, sir... What more satisfaction could you demand? Huh? Perhaps you're right, Paladin. Perhaps you're right. Oh, 
All right, hey, boy. Now, where was I? Oh, let me see. Uh, the chair was right about uh, here, Mr. Paladin. Uh, yes, that's, that's fine. Uh, she is in the dining room. Oh, she in there, all right. You almost finished with her dinner? Yes, hmm? uh, working on dessert last time I looked. Uh, all right, then. Now, I'll just sit here with the newspaper, and I won't seem to... Uh, to uh, conspicuous. Conspicuous, hey, boy? Yes, sir, that's what I say. Uh, you're going to get a uh, good of view, all right, Mr. Paladin? Good. And uh, uh, possibly, if you're not standing around grinning like an ape, oh, 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 oh. possibly I can say hello to her as she goes by. And then, after that, oh, you see, we'll, I, we'll... I wouldn't say hello, Mr. Paladin. Oh? Why not, hey, boy? <laughs> that is why, Mr. Paladin. Yes, of course. Yes, sir. Uh, he sat here in your chair while you gone, Mr. Paladin. I understand. Yes, sir. Um, old chair still got same fine view of lobby, Mr. Paladin. No. Not tonight, eh, boy? I feel... I feel a little tired. How many times when you're driving along the road do you flick a lighted cigarette butt out the window? Many people do. They figure that the butt will land on the pavement where it will either burn itself out or be run over and extinguished by the next car that passes. This is what usually happens. But a cigarette sometimes rolls off the road. A gust of wind can carry it into dry underbrush. Then there's trouble. More than one devastating brush or forest fire has been caused by just such carelessness. Don't take a chance on being a firebug. Your car has an ashtray. Please use it. In fact, whenever you're in or near the woods, be extra careful how you use any fire. Remember these simple, effective fire prevention rules. Break all matches in two, then you'll be certain they're not burning. Crush out your cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Don't leave a single spark behind. Keep your campfire under control. Never leave one that's still smoldering. Stir it thoroughly, drown it completely, then repeat the process. Remember, you can prevent forest fires or set them. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles as John Sutherland, Tracy Roberts as Elizabeth, Sam Edwards as Douglas, and Barbara Eiler as Miss Gibson. This is Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> 